Hey. What time is it? <laughs> right now, what time is it? 7.15. 7.15 what? In the morning. Try to get a little footage, but can't even have a board. So, look at you making me skate. You forget to send me boards. Look at this soggy, chipped piece of wood that you expect me to get footage on. Are you serious? Like, I was going to Philly a lot, and then I just, you know, finished high school, and then... Bill had a house out there with his girlfriend at the time. Just was staying with him a lot of like a lot of weekends and stuff and ended up just getting my own place out there and still at that time, seventeen years old, skating was so consuming. And like Philadelphia was complete skate too, and we would just skate all day and night, have have some beers, go to bed, skate, and that's that's all it was. <laughs> Philadelphia was a great fit for anybody that was, it was, you know, it was love at the prime, prime time. It was like, everyone skating in the park all day. It was just love all day, City Hall, love City Hall. I mean, those guys definitely put it more on the map, you know, with the Habitat video and the workshop video. And it came down and just turned things around for everyone, you know, skateboard-wise. And they really opened people's eyes to who they were really fast. Well, when those guys first came down, it was nose grind pop out era. You know, they, everything was nose grind pop out of the ledge, and they could just do it all. They could just and fuck. It, we, none of us could even nose grind the love ledges, you know, besides Kalis. And he, they, those guys just come down there and just blew everyone's minds away. I mean, Wendy was doing shit on ledges that he couldn't even like fathom. You know, it was, it was amazing. I'd say Wendy more first, but Anthony was kind of Anthony came up real fast. You know what I mean? They weren't much alike, that's for sure. I mean, Wedding was like, Wedding always wanted the attention. You know, he was like doing stupid shit to get people to look at him. And then, you know, Anthony would just be skating, you know. You know, I look at my skating when I was 15 or 16 now. I don't regret, you know, a lot of the stuff I did, but it's, it's just definitely, you know, you change. I hope you would change. Hope everyone would change from when they're 15, 16 years old. Otherwise, it'd be a fucked up place, man. But um, I don't have the, like, the, the mentals to, to do a lot of the skating I used to do back then. Oh! oh, oh. Did I almost do it? <laughs> you alright? Yeah, let me see. I would say the one that stands out in my mind right now, that would switch Ollie to the fountain for sure. Didn't ever even ollie it. You know, I mean, didn't even try to ollie it ever. Just straight to switch ollie. That blows my mind away. Ah! He just did it. I mean, he got broke, he got beat up. I mean, I was scared for him sometimes. Yeah, like switch ollie to the fountain at night. What the hell are you thinking? PJ Ladd in California, sometimes it gives me the feeling that hanging with Anthony back then. Oh! Oh! That's why we were in competition and it helped both of us. Oh! I don't know if he just forgot about himself or what. I mean, I still skate the same exact shit, but maybe he thought it was time to move on. That was the time where like he'd be at the spot, at Love Park, and we we wouldn't even we wouldn't even we wouldn't even talk. But you 
switch 180 did. Oh, did yeah. You, did you have it in mind that, okay, he switched all of it? I don't know. Somebody was telling me in the background, like, when I, because he did it, like, a week before. And then I like how that Vern Laird character likes to say it in the on video about, oh, that was before Brian did switch back, 7-8, but whatever. So I landed that, got a cheesesteak, and, like, everybody went crazy. And then you look over, and Anthony's, like, trying to do a nolly tray flip nose band, you know, nolly flip out or something in the main lives. But, yeah, I don't, we just separated. I think that, that was it. That was, like, the breakup. That was just ridiculous. He claims there's something in some magazine, I remember, that we only have skateboard in common. But it's probably true, but whatever. Yeah, I don't know, man. I think we just kind of grew, grew apart. Like, you know, when you're young, like, like something like skateboarding could just, you know, you just have that little thing that two people do and that you guys could just grow and be like the sickest friends ever. And it's just skateboarding, you know. But as you get older, it's like you kind of get involved in other stuff. Good, bad. It, can, it doesn't even have to be like other, you know. And I think that's just kind of what happened with, with us. Like, you know, I think at a point, all we did have was skating. Talk to him now, like man to man. Easy. That's swollen. Okay, man. Yeah. And everyone regrets shit they do when they're 16, you know? He had like huge gear. Like, he was like, he looks totally different, you know what I mean? He grew out of that. He was like hip hop, like he looked, he looked, he looked funny. I mean, we all look funny back then. We were young, you know? He skated very conventionally then, you know what I mean? Like, I think he was, like, doing what he thought other people wanted him to do. I think that, <clears throat> I think that now he kind of does what he wants, and that's what makes him happy, and, and, and I think that's fine. By the time he got to Mosaic, do you think he was a different person from Photosynthesis? I feel like around the end of Mosaic, he was. But people change every, like, ten minutes, like, Ten minutes ago, I was in my sweatpants in that bed right there, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He was definitely changing. I mean, those years from, like, 16 to 24, people change, like, significantly, you know? You're a kid, you don't know what you're doing. You're trying things to see what you like, you know what I mean? And then, eventually, down the line, you, like, know what you like. All his friends that skated uh, don't skate no more. He skated with Rob Pulowski, who has two kids and works in fucking, fucking sand and wood all day. What's up, Rob? I love Rob. Rob's one of my best friends, man. He's I haven't seen him in a long time, but we were real, we, us three were real close. Like, we were like, hang every day. Come on, Pop. You got for this. You know, they were just my friends growing, you know, like since I'm 15 on, you know, in skating or outside of skating, we could like have a cup of coffee and have a chat or something, talk about normal shit. Rob always had a good attitude of like, kind of knowing this isn't, and kind of trained me where I think it's a good mentality where people take the skating thing too serious and it's like, it's like you're not a fucking rock star and like this, People, skaters have a problem being like a realist and just, you know, it's going to end. And Rob always had a good level head of like, well, this isn't going to last forever. So, well, we have off time and we're getting paid to do nothing. You know, let's go to cook, like, let's go do something and go on a road trip or something. And it was always fun. It was cool. Philly was dead. It was just, it, was, it wasn't. There was, it was just dead. It, I felt like I needed a change in my life. So I always wanted to live in New York. And Anthony was, he's always, you know, he's from Long Island. He came up there with me. You know, we got an apartment together. We lived together. It was great. It was a, that was a good year of my life, living on 1st and 10th. And then things, things started to change. And, like, I had a kid, and, you know, I had to do what I had to do here. And then I got kicked off of Habitat, you know. And then I started to realize I skate when it wasn't for me, you know, in the long run. I would skate with him every day. And kind of, I think when I left, it was kind of like a last friend on the team, you know? It's like Anthony's a really down-to-earth guy, you know what I mean? He's like, there's no ego involved. There's no, like, he just wants to go skateboard, have a good time, you know what I mean? 
and he just enjoys time there and you get in a you get in a van or you go on a trip and it's like within five minutes like dudes they won't stop talking about themselves hey man it's 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 a great company it's like at one time I think when I first got on alien it was heavily east coast and had all those like influences and those people behind it and style and ideas and aesthetics and I think that did die out you know and I don't think it's and I don't know who to say if that's a good thing or a bad thing it's just that's that's what makes it just skating and it's just I'm sure there's tons of kids you know in California that love Alien now that didn't like it you know when it was more so it's just like you know who's to say that it was better then but I, I think it was more of an East Coast vibe at a point, like like it, like one of those older types of teams, like like Rick and those dudes. Like, you know, you'll catch them all skating together in California. I feel like I mean, he dude, he's workshop forever, dude. I mean, he had a he had the tattoo, he had a workshop tattoo. You know, I don't even know if he still has it, but I think he does. It's right on his wrist. But and then you know, Alien changed, but like it was like that, dude. It was like then. All these dudes, new dudes got on. Anthony got on the chocolate right after that. It was like, seriously, like, I feel like a couple months after that, he was just like, yo, I want chocolate. I don't know. You know, Anthony just wanted to be with dudes that kind of like, you know, like like Mike Carroll, Rick Howard. You know, they went out and skated, had a good time, came home, like, did their own thing, had like a little family feeling thing going on. But at workshop at that time, it was kind of like everyone was out to be number one. He was like, I, you know, I just need something changed. Something more me, you know what I mean? Something more, more his style, you know? So this is it, you guys made it, made it over here. But no one's really seen it to this level in a while. Everyone kind of, when I first got it, people came over here and were like, what are you gonna do in this dungeon? And just be by yourself like you always do? And it's just like, no, no, like I'm gonna fix it up and do what I wanna do and like make stuff. This stuff's beautiful. It looks like a painting almost, you know. But it's just like skating. You know, you just get older and it's like skating can't, you want it to, but physically your body doesn't let you do what you want to be doing. And it, and it could frustrate you and you could put that energy into something totally negative, which is sad. I think a lot of people in, in the skateboard world do. Or you could try to try to do something. I don't know what's cooler. I don't, I don't know. You could try to make something and get do other stuff. And that's pretty much what this is. Yeah, I mean, woodworking and just trying to make stuff. You know, if that's if this is what I'm going to be doing for the next 50 years, I don't know. You know, it's keeping me busy now. I, I really enjoy doing it. And like I said, it's like East Coast Pro. It's like, I mean, you, you see it, it's a lot of downtime, not skating, you know. You could piss away a lot of free time. And I think I just hit a point where that free time was killing me. I couldn't, I couldn't do it anymore. I needed a, a place or something to make myself feel like I'm doing something productive when I'm not skating instead of you know, sitting at the bar or something, or watching TV, or, which I, you know, no hard feeling, you know, to each their own, but I just know as a personal thing where I was at a year or two ago, and I just need, needed something more than just numbing myself out when I was done skating, and just have to keep it going. I guess I met Papalardo in late 2003 when he moved to New York. I don't know, you know, like, on one hand, like, I sort of, you sort of have a preconceived idea, you know, like, you think about dudes that skate for Alien, and you think of, like, Van Englen and fucking Kalis and people like that, and they're, like, sort of intimidating, so you gotta think, like, a kid from the East Coast that came up skating in Philly, essentially, like, you know, when you see his first couple parts, like, he might be kind of a dick. He definitely was a lot more down-to-earth and humble, like, meeting him, you know? I mean, every interview where people are talking about the Lakai video, they're like, oh, there's such this, like, big, exp long expectation. Everyone's, their hopes are so high, like, blah, blah, blah. Like, I'm sure he doesn't respond to that at all. Like, he, he, that's the last thing he wants to think about. And so, like, 
probably woodworking or whatever he's doing off the board is probably like in some ways therapeutic or it's just kind of keeping him grounded, you know? Anthony's just like not, I feel like he's just not gung ho about it. Like, I don't, I don't feel like he like wakes up and like, fuck, dude, I gotta like go out and backside 360 flip tail slide on this ledge right now. Like, I think he does what he thinks looks good and it's not about pressing and impressing anyone. It's not about impressing anyone at all. It's kind of about just being true to yourself. Ooh. Yeah, he doesn't, he's he definitely not a spotlight person, you know, he doesn't really, yeah, he definitely frustrates him for sure. You know, he doesn't like people caring or even wanting to care about what he's up to. He's, he's just to himself, you know, just a normal person who just, he's good at skateboarding. You know? People like saying, hey, you know, what's Anthony doing? What's he up to? Like, he's in a skateboard in Brooklyn somewhere, you know what I mean? Maybe he's by himself, maybe he's with Bill, you know, I don't know. early in the morning on a fucking Sunday, eight in the morning, I rode my bike over the bridge and uh, I get a text from, <laughs> from Papalardo like 15 minutes later and he's like, riding your bike over the Williamsburg Bridge? And I was like, yeah, like, what are you doing up? And he's like, killing it. <laughs> like, where the fuck was he? Like, he, I don't know, you know, what was he doing at eight in the morning on a Sunday? Like the root of skateboarding has and always will be is fun. Mm -hmm. And making skate videos, you definitely have to put in work. And it takes the fun aspect out of it. You know, we got we gotta go bomb over this, and we gotta go light this up, and we gotta go here, we gotta do that. And skating's not like that. You know, skating's like what Papalardo's part's about. It is about going out of your door and skating down the street. I don't think you'd ever see Pop skating like a one of those makeshift jump ramp the ledges or something. You know what I mean? It's like he skates like true stuff that you would find just lurking around. Out of all the parts in the video, look at Pop's part and it's the most true to skating. It's the less contrived part out of everything, you know? And that's what makes Pop's part stand out. You know, aside from the fact that it's all on the East Coast, you know, that, that's a, just a totally raw, pure form of skating. That's basically the equivalent of jumping out of your front door and skating something. the vibe of fully flared and the vibe of like the rest of the team had anything to do with him not skating for Kai anymore after that? No. I mean, I don't know if it's common knowledge, but that was going on before the video was even over. You know, it's like, I think the one thing about like Lakai is that there's so many good guys on there. They all deserve to have shoes and these great deals. And I don't care what company you are, it's like, how do you support 19 pro shoes? That's a huge salary. You gotta be like the swoosh or the three stripes to support some shit like that. And I'm sure, I'm sure when Pops was filming his part, he knew like, I'm just gonna get through this Lakai fucking thing, get through this beast and then I'll get on a shoe company and pay some bills. Like, you know, I think it's great that someone like Alex and Pops can go and live a little bit more comfortably, you know, and, you know, it's not affecting their positions on Chocolate or Girl, and I think, like, what Federico was saying, like, you know, it's pretty cool that, like, everything just kind of worked out, you know. Like, he's doing all right. He's doing good. He's, he's stoked on everything. I think Le leaving Lakai was a good thing for him. I think it was, like, you know, 
Rick and Mike left their like companies, you know, when they're younger, like to try their own things and to see if they like it. I mean, and they seem to be doing well themselves. So, yeah. Mm. He seems to be like the forefront. Like he seems to be like the dude at Converse, you know what I mean? So that's like a good thing, you know? Because he's like, oh, I want this shoe. Like, I can get it, you know what I mean? Like, I can tell them I want this in suede. I want this, like, and it's it's there, you know? They're they're super down for him. This Converse, they get behind this kind of stuff? Yeah, they, they were psyched. They were like the initial people that helped me out with this space and getting this space going and and, and pushing, pushing me to do, pushing me to do some more of this stuff and that's a good feeling to have you know not just like send me your footage tape the 30 seconds of footage and you know they know i'm skating when i'm skating and in here i'm not trying to fool anyone or it's a really good relationship and i think some of the first 20 25 people like shops and stuff that kind of order converse and just shops in general that, you know, carry the product and back it. We'll get like one of these benches or something. We're trying to work something out. Not like the dudes at the sh skate shop give a shit, but whatever. If I'm not skating, I'm in here. Used to be the bar. So yeah, I'd rather just come here and just play around, make, try, try to make something. Yeah, Coco Bowl is really interesting. This stuff's really cool, like uh, the spalted maple. Like, I want to do a huge table of just this stuff. Yeah, my grandfather gave me a lot of stuff. He was an electrician, and he always did this as kind of like a hobby as well, kind of woodworking and anything craftsman. He would just, he, he, he like built his own house type of guy. So he gave me a lot of his old stuff to play around with and it was actually cool he came over here about a month ago and he was he's just like the guy that you can never get a reaction out of and he was he was like proud it was cool stray stray friendly as dog friendly as dog she looks like santa's little helper <laughs> 